Well, that uh, video didn't go as planned because I hit the photo button when I went to split. So, I found another round of wood. This one, this one's an ash. Now, I can either eye it up with this edge here that's more for a, a heating wood. This little groove here, you can't see it, but it goes like this. It goes straight across and then dips down a little bit. So there's a little groove right here. This spot here is a little higher than this one, so it forms like a log cradle. But uh, So this is like a 5 eighths of an inch difference, so you can get much more bundle friendly splits. What I would recommend doing is put a tiny little weld of bead or just drill a hole right through here as a, a marker for how you uh where you want to position this piece to get those split. So I'm gonna split this in half and then show you what I'm going on about in action. Right, as you can see the second one I did for just uh, campfire wood this could also be heating wood you could see this piece I would cut in half for bundles well, that's basically a size comparison between bundle and campfire wood I also you know piece like this you know you're looking at you know half the size yeah, so this is a nice piece of bundle wood. That's the difference between my two marking points between here and here. And then I resplit. If I split to the wider mark, I'm definitely going to have to split in half again. But then I might end up with, you know bigger pieces of wood like this that might be too big for bundle bundles so that those are the two ways I know of how to mark without drilling anything or doing a a weld bead it's just know your machine and just eyeball it 
no need to be a uh, super super precise with a little practice of uh eyeballing it you should be able to get the uh hang of it no i'm not wearing sunglasses i my i have those uh transition lenses that go dark when you're out in the sun so if i took my glasses off i'd be pretty blinded oh i'm blind with them without them anyway for the most part but <laughs> yeah i got cursed with my dad's eyes so yeah, that's a quick and easy way how to eyeball the size of your splits if you want to do bundles or campfire when you want to keep your splits consistently sized. So like a, this piece, I'll just leave it as is. Uh, it goes a lot faster. But then uh, for bundle, I'll just uh, either split smaller rounds and toss that wood to the side as I go to uh, uh, restock from inventory or something. I'll figure something out if I have time to do bag bags or bundles because that's where the profit's at. Uh, nearly a 250% profit increase because your costs are still fixed on the wood, you know, and even taking out the extra expense for uh, stretch wrap, 15 to 20 cents a bundle, uh, bags are depending on the price could be 65 cents to a dollar depending on how much you got to pay for them but still even at a dollar a bag you're at two dollars a bundle you're doing uh five dollars a bag and you say you're doing smaller bags uh one cubic foot you're at five times 128 three times 128 that's 250 Six, uh, three, seventy-six, three hundred eighty-four dollars uh, profit. When I do only two hundred in the roadside stand, the way it is uh, with the uh, four and eight-foot rack, so substantial increase, uh, double the profits. But if I go to uh, uh, 0.75 cubic foot bundles and sell them for the same price, the profits are added probably another hundred dollars to that easily i'd have to do the math but that's the economics of doing a uh, loose bulk and campfire wood so till next time folks take care get out there do something have fun doing it